All right, all right, people. Let's see if I can uh, get through this video. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Well, I've had some people ask me, hey, man, when are you going to show your stuff? When are you going to show your, your projects? Um, so here's one of them right here. I'm sure if you may have seen, if you've gone back far enough, I made a couple of videos on this car some years back when I first started the channel and, you know, just kind of going over what I wanted to do, what, what the plans were for it and whatnot. And, and then I didn't make any other videos on it. Just sat, you know, all sorts of crap, you know, that I had going on, work, you know, personal stuff, uh, just flat out procrastination at times. <laughs> you know health issues and whatnot ah, anyways man so yeah it's a 66 buick special and obviously you can tell it's a it's a wagon yeah she look pretty straight don't she yeah <laughs> yeah so here's a here's a little quick backstory on the car all right several years ago i was looking for a for a shop vehicle, See, I do factory air conditioning and heating restoration for classic cars. And uh, you can see some of it right there, up there, more there, some right here, right behind me, all this. And anyways, so I go to the swap me slash car shows and whatnot, you know, set up like a vendor and showcase my work and stuff. And I was like, man, I need a, I need a vehicle. I need, I need something. I need, a, I need a classic car. I need a classic vehicle that kind of with the stuff, you know, everything all done and working and whatnot. So people are like, it gives you a little more, you know, I'm like, oh, crap. He, you know, this guy, yeah, he really does know what he's doing. <laughs> what he's doing. Uh, but anyways, you know, I just thought it'd be cool, you know head out to these places with with an actual classic vehicle instead of you know just going in my pickup truck my you know my 2000 silverado even though you know majority of people do that so like i said i was looking for 67 to 72 gm or ford pickup truck that's like the sweet spot for me maybe el camino ranchero or a wagon and when I went, if it was a wagon it wouldn't have mattered but if it was ford could have been mopar could have been gm you know i it doesn't matter because I, I just like the look of them. Had to be something utilitarian. Had to be cheap. And like I said, had to be factory air conditioning and could not be a freaking rust bucket. You know. <laughs> I know everybody's idea of what, you know, a badly rusted car, you know, that varies, you know. I, but, well, but me being from Florida, it, cars rust real bad down there. So... I decided that, uh, so when, when I seen this one, you know, I was like, man, it doesn't look like it's that, that bad, but, you know, from the pictures the guy had, but he had it for two grand, right? He posted it up for $2,000. So I was like, man, that's, that's a cool looking car, but oh, crap, two grand. Will he be able to drop the price a little bit, man? You know, uh, that, was, that, that, that was a little bit out of my sweet spot. So he, about a month later, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of interest in it. And he dropped it down to fifteen hundred. I was like, hmm, fifteen hundred. I wonder if I could get him to drop it a little more. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe he'll drop it. You know. So I was, but I was kind of lurking, and you know, <clears throat> I was kind of hesitating. And you know, I mean, I mean, you know what they say about that? Those who hesitate, man. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't come back and bite me in the ass because. Uh, about a few weeks later after that, he dropped the price again. He dropped it to a grand. You know. So I was like, man, now he's got my undivided attention. Now I got to go look at this car. So I went. Guy comes out. I was like, hey, I know you, man. It turns out I knew the guy that was selling it. I didn't know him by name or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I, I I had actually... I used to see him at the I used to see him at swap meets all the time. He sets up as a vendor, him and his whole family, and yeah, he's. Yeah, I had bought parts from him before, but so he's like, yeah, you know, the engine's locked up. It's a three hundred. You know, it's long gone now. I use it as a core. And he couldn't get it. He couldn't get it unstuck, and I was like, I don't care. That that doesn't matter to me. I already know what's going in there, anyways. So. You know, I thought maybe he could, maybe we could do a little, a little bit more, 
maybe some some bartering for for some parts or whatnot because he's into the 67 to 72 trucks he's got like a i think he's got a, he's got a suburban and a couple trucks or whatnot but anyways he's like nah man i really just want the money and you know so i was like all right man i said hey you think you could let me uh borrow your trailer too you know i mean you know he's, he's like maybe 40 minutes away from me you know and he's like yeah sure so heck man I, he guy even let me borrow his trailer to, to tow this thing home because i to the shop because i i don't have a i don't have a trailer yet i've been meaning to get one and you know save at least about 100 bucks on a tow so yeah got it for a grand man you know and real quick he said he yeah, i think he works for the railroad he was out in on the stick somewhere and noticed this with a couple other vehicles that were sitting on some property so he went and inquired about it and good thing he did because that previous owner had said something about uh you know they were they were having health issues and they were going to send these on down the road to the scrapyard so i'm assuming he probably paid maybe a little more or right around scrapyard price so you know he made himself a little bread i don't you know don't matter to me that's to me, and I don't give a crap, you know, some people are like, oh, man, I don't want to, you know, I'll keep that a secret, man, you know, I don't want to talk about how much I paid for it, I'm like, ah, I don't give a damn, man, you know, I paid, my 80 money car, I paid $400 in a used Nextel, so, uh, uh, did he say a used Nextel? <laughs> you can tell how long that's been, <laughs> yeah, you know. And like I said, this one back here, I paid 300 bucks for that thing. The lady was like, just give me what the junkyard will give me. <laughs> okay. And yes, titles on all of them, baby. I don't do that no title crap, man. I don't, I don't, only one that, I only got one without a title, and that's strictly as a parts car. So I don't, I don't like dealing with vehicles with no titles. But, you know, I know some people don't care. You know, here in Texas, you got to go hold a whole bond title deal. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Screw all that mess. Anyways, so. Got it for a grand and, you know, brought it home, did the, to the shop and made the videos on it and then I just stopped. Well, now I was moving from that shop to this one. I said, man, I got, I, I got all the stuff. I got a lot of, pretty much the majority of stuff I need. I got to get a lot of this stuff done before I take it over to that shop, you know. I mean, it needs to be damn near almost complete before I, I, I take it over there because, obviously i don't got the room right now you know it's like this is barely enough to do what i need to do around this car uh yeah so that's where we're at now she is we'll take a real quick real quick look around on her so sorry the uh you know if little my little explanation of the whole situation you know took a good what seven eight minutes so <laughs> so yeah man she's she looks fairly straight obviously as you can see um Nothing's really wrong with the tailgate. No rust really to speak of down at the bottom. Sometimes they tend to rust down there. The bumper's got a couple of dings on it. Nothing bad. Tail light's all right. Did I mention about the Metter, Metter Ford, uh, uh, Fort Worth? I think that's where she was sold new. That place is still around. The motor here, he took it out, said it wasn't working. I've got to mess with it you can see don't have a didn't get the spare but i got all the the, the i guess the majority of the, or the, all the components of the jack uh, bumper jack there turn that back on real quick inside well right here when you hear the really the main stuff that's missing is the headliner as you can tell the majority of the carpet and she doesn't have the you know the the third row here the seat that be hidden down there she don't have that uh, let's see let's see let me take the light back off she don't have any any hail damage which that's a good thing oh man i thought about putting a you know a, a rack on her but man i just can't I can't bring myself to make any holes you know put any holes on it this is about the only rust through that i that i found on it this, this area right here I think I'm going to try to like this use some uh, rust inhibitor on her and you know to convert this this rust here and then kind of block it off so we don't we don't have any uh, it's not leaking in there. I really don't want to mess with the the paint. Uh, you know I really don't want to do any of that even though most some of it's already coming off or not. This car was repainted, you could tell it was some type of a green and I like green. I do. 
You know, I, I definitely like green. Except when they when green is paired with beige brown. Yeah. No 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 no. That 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 don't go that doesn't go good with me. <laughs> you know. So kudos to the guy that decided, hey man, why don't we kind of paint it similar exterior color <laughs> to the inside? Yeah. The doors, you know, they all open and close very well. You know. She's I got her sitting on these poncho wheels, but only because I just needed something decent with good 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 tires to to roll around. Most of the tires that I have are, you know, flat. So because they're, I mean, they're on rims that I want, but the tires are, you know, end up going flat on me. And these, these don't. So, but I do have some good, I have a nice, uh, I have some 15 by 7 uh, Buick rallies that'll go on there. Obviously, you can tell, let me, let me pick, I, I have this closed because the, um, you know, the light, since I was filming from back here this way, it's going to screw with like the, you know, the exposure or whatnot. Alright, hurry up, I'm gonna catch the damn, uh, looks like it's gonna start to rain soon, but you probably hear that wind. But you can tell, you know, what it is already. Uh, my intention was always to put an LS in it. That was just, you know, this is what I wanted to do. I like the LS platform. Uh, I did it a decade ago on a Monte Carlo, you know, and it's, I just like it, man. I really do. Not saying that I, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm an LS fanboy because, you know, I know it's kind of, you know, hey, we're we're old school, you know, here over here with LS, man. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, you can figure, I could put one of these in there, you know, you know, 455 right there. Here's a nail head, you know, and, and I've got others. I mean, you know, other engines that are old school like that. There's 440 Chrysler, 429 Ford, uh, 400 Pontiac, 425 uh, Oldsmobile, 350 Oldsmobile. I mean, I've got, I've got, I got engines, but this one originally, my the plans were to put an LS in it. That that's that's what I was going to do. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's an LM4. It's the all aluminum version of the LM7, which is what you've got in your all your your Silverados back then, and your Tahoes and whatnot. You know the five threes. So, yeah, it's the all aluminum version of it. I think I took it out of a Trailblazer or an Envoy or something like 2003. Didn't really do anything to it and just clean it up. Yeah, didn't really do anything to it. Just straight up a pullout. You know, one from a Recta um, Trailblazer. So. What else? What else we got here? Uh, let's see. And I have already. I, I finally got it to to turn on, and so don't mind all the mess here. Just you know, me trying to just figuring out why I didn't want us to turn on. You know, it's I the wiring harness. You know, it's it, I bought it from a company years ago. Worked flawlessly on my on my car for years. The computer as well. So there was an issue. Ended up being the uh, <laughs> I had the fuel pressure. Man, I had the wrong freaking the uh, fuel pump in there. You know, it's a long story. I had two new fuel pumps. I knew one was not correct, and I lost the other one and ended up installing the wrong one, <laughs> thinking it was the right one. But anyways, all brake new, uh, new brakes, front to back. Everything is uh, rear drums were rebuilt. Swapped the front drums for discs out of a '71 Cutlass, not Cutlass, uh, Skylark, you know, and so yeah. We, so now we're we're power uh, disc brakes up in the front here. Uh, let's see, let's see. The steering components consist of this is a this is out of a uh, what do you call a damn thing? A, a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So this and the steering shaft, which is not on there now, it's not playing well with the piece of crap uh, Chinese eBay headers that. Man, I don't like those things. I may end up uh, just getting some flanges and kind of kind of making my own sort of a deal there. But uh, yeah, so the reason that it's changed over to to the Jeep Land Cherokee is because these have a quicker ratio steering. So man, you could man, these things go on on. You still go on this car right here, you know? They'll they can put them on a crap load of different cars, man. So. Uh, and all this, all the rest of the steering components are were bought new in a kit. See that Pro Forged? Got them from uh, Summit. 
I need to, my brother put this on without cleaning this damn thing up. You know, she's just a cruiser, so it's not like we're going to, you know, it's not like you know, we're going to autocross it or take it out to the track kind of thing. It's just, you know, to do cruising, maybe cross country, you know, trips, stuff like that. So that's the, we're not going for anything fancy here. As far as suspension, and she's got all new polyurethane bushings front to back with, uh, what else, what else? Uh, oh, that includes the polyurethane uh, engine mounts too. I mean, not engine mounts, but uh, uh, body mount bushings. So I put those all on new. You know, springs, Summit, I think they're one, one inch drop. Uh, KYBs in the front. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the KYBs, but they came as, a, I bought them from this guy who had, he had just swapped over his stuff that was pretty much brand new for coilovers and, and, uh, and tubular control arms. So I got all that stuff pretty cheap. Anyways, uh, factory AC. The only thing I've done really is change over the, the evaporator. I got to finish all this up right here. So other than that, man, I mean, I don't know what else. The rear end is uh, the rear end is actually the, the, the 12 bolt out of that, out of the cutlass back there. So, but. So, you know, it's a one-wheel peel, and I just wanted to put something on here. Somebody wants to check out the, uh, the deal here. So, it's uh, the suspension on the back, so all that's been done. So, got a rear sway bar back there. Let me turn this light on here. Inside here, we got just, I mean, nothing fancy. You know. Is your vents? I love the vents on these older cars, man. The ones like like sixty six, like the on well, this one's sixty six. So, so on the older ones, man, before they became plastic, man, I like this straight up, straight up metal, man. His steering wheel is all bitched up, but uh, I got another one. It's a little better shape. But I think I'm gonna go with a uh, period correct aftermarket. Dash is cracked. This is the mileage it was showing. <laughs> Somebody put a Krako with an 8-track on it. I found that at a, at a, at a junkyard. <laughs> I got both of them. got the small one, too, wherever it is for the, uh, the dimmer switch. So, yeah, you know, seats are, you know, none the best of shape. She does have the protecto plate and all that. All that came in there, so that was pretty cool. You know, original... Uh, all that crap that fell down from the, from the headliner. So this will. Go around this way real quick here. Uh, I only paint. I was originally gonna paint the the, the firewall, but sick with it, man. I ended up painting like from here this way. There's the, not in the best of shape, but engineered approved accessories for 1966. That's pretty neat, right? That's pretty freaking neat. Look at that. There's the, uh, the beauty. Look at that ski rack. You get a ski rack, man. Check that out. Ain't that something? That's pretty neat. Buick Wildcat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat, man. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the owner's manual and the where is it she's all the way to the back back there there she is right there the protecto plate yeah cool deal cool deal i want to put this on here too oh, yeah. somehow get it up on there so there she is i want to take a quick look underneath uh oh i'm gonna break this damn this damn thing over here A quick look underneath real quick real quick Get close to 20 minutes here i don't want to ah. Ah. said real sway bar i had to buy it had to have a new one made man this freaking that was almost 300 dollars for that damn uh um that drive shaft but check out check out these check that out man look at this look at the uh That's solid, man. Heck yeah. 
<laughs> Look in here. Look at that. Look at that. She was sitting in a field too, man. The exhaust here. I got this exhaust for 20 bucks, man. $20. They made a mistake at the yard. They're having a half off sale and they were trying to hurry and get up out of there. And I got a lot more. Uh, uh, it, was in, it was in a C10. Uh, what do you call it? A square body. Just got into the yard. It was, it was no head. It was on a fire. Yeah, engine fire. And they had just put that exhaust on. So I cut that off, man, and took that. Heck yeah. Make my own damn exhaust. Oh, the rest of it's sitting up there, see? But, um,. Take that light off. So there it is, man. We're at 20 minutes now, and I don't want to. I don't want to make this video that long. So if I missed anything or whatnot, oh, the all the rest of the front here. If you're worried about, or wondering what, what where it's at, it's uh, it's like the there's the there's that front end right here, grill. Headlight bezels, headlights, radiator core support, condenser, all of that condenser is going to be going out. Both of the fenders are over there, hoods in the back. So that's it, man. Oh, the, yeah, I've got to, got to, got to do the, that's the, uh, that right there is the, the fuel tank that I'll be putting in it. Uh, it's, it's out of a 91 to 96 uh, B body station wagon, so. All right, anything if y'all want to know anything else, man, y'all let me know. Like I said, I'll, I'll make some videos as, as the progress that I, that, you know, as I progress through this, I'm going to do the, I'm going to hook that up first, and then we're going to do the, the exhaust slash steering uh, shaft, because those two things are kind of go hand in hand. At least for me, they are. Outside of that, you know, whatever's after that, we'll just keep going. All right, man, on to the next one, man.